Guys, welcome to the green room. So nice to meet you finally, Mark. You too. And obviously, Wendy, I'm so glad you reached out on Instagram. It's so, I love connecting with people that way, especially doing a show like this on mental health and being able to reach people like you. And Angie, as, yeah, as usual, you. love to have yeah. you, love to see you. <laughs> um, so usually how we like to start this is just to have Angie sort of give context and introduce you guys, and then we can start a great conversation. Yeah, and mention all the lovely partners we work with. So. As Jenna mentioned, Green Room, thank you guys for coming. <laughs> Obviously, Jenna's our host and founder and multi-hyphenate, you know, producer, executive producer, songwriter, entrepreneur. And we're so happy to have Marky Basie here today, who's a recording artist, a songwriter, has an album coming out hopefully soon this summer. Oh, and I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. And then Wendy Parr, a amazing holistic artist coach who also is a vocal producer, vocal coach, and songwriter herself, too. Thank you. So glad to be here. That's amazing. Well, I would love to know a little bit more about you. I know we were starting to talk about it yes. before we started this, but tell everybody. What, tell us a little bit about your, your past and how you came to Absolutely. To tell be. us your origin story, Wendy. <laughs> tell, us your worst, tell, us, tell us your worst, most embarrassing moment. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me go through yeah. the whole next year. Um, yeah, I came up as an artist. I started working when I was eight. You know, okay. Actor, singer, performer, voiceovers. And, you know, going through the industry as a performer, I really experienced what all of my artists and clients go through, right? Right. Um, at 15, Motown had my record and was like, what do we do with a 15-year-old who sings like an adult and is Caucasian and does R&B? Right. And then later it was like Warner Brothers, wow, this is good, this is good, but you should go more in the direction of like Alanis Morissette. So... You know, I had everyone telling me who to be and how to be. Um, and then in my personal life, the same, you know. Like, oh, yeah. I, I actually looked a lot like this from the time I was a kid. <laughs> like, By the way, I love, I love your yeah. look. It's Thank vibe. You. Like, it, the hairdo wasn't You're up, artist. but it was like, uh, I, like I, mean, I was wearing ties as a kid. And, you know, I was definitely told, you know, don't look like that. And so don't do you. Meanwhile, I'm an artist and a person and a creative who, like, I have to show up doing me. Like, I don't know how else to live or want to live any other way. Well, when they say don't do, that's the thing, right? Right. When they say don't do it, go like, do it I'm even more. It. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, um, and, and then I had, I had a coach who was telling me, like, there's a right way to sing, and this is the only way to sing. And so what happened was I ended up being really unhappy, right? Like, my voice is out here, and I'm getting compliments on that, but my heart and soul is back here, and I'm like... So I had to find my way back to, like, my love of music, and that really became the cornerstone of how I coach. I started coaching when I was about 20 and really found that like I had put more energy into that than going on tour myself. I was like, oh, yeah. I love this. Like I love empowering other people. I love working with other people and helping them open up their voice. What and about that? Sorry to cut. What about that do you love? I really just think it's like how I'm made. Like, you know, if okay. you, you know, I love empowering calling. people. I love I love getting information, like all kinds of information and then sharing it with other people. You yeah. Know? I can't help myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and I think that like I think that's really what we're here for. Like as a humanity, we're actually here to like support each other. A hundred percent. Grow together, and you know we're here to make ourselves better with each other. You know, yeah. And, um, and be there for each other, and that's again like that's how my coaching has become like helping the individual really find their voice vocally, and then beyond that like artistically, how does that translate? You know, to your visuals and your music and your sound and your social media and you know I made a record when I was young that was like West African and um, Western and then later um, Indian and, and Western that one's like sitting on a shelf to be finished later because I stopped pursuing my, well I want to hear music. it <laughs> I, it's so good it needs to like find its life but it, again it's about like I love taking flavors that I love and putting them together right and we all actually do but right society or culture will tell you no be in this box or be more like oh, this. Oh, right? man. And so I want to help artists. Like, no, no, you put your recipe together. Let, let me help you put your recipe together. I love that. I always talk about that because for so long, uh, and even now, but I think it's becoming more accept not even accepted but like i think people are realizing that it's important like when people are like oh you wear so many hats right yeah. like jack of all trades you can't be good at like all these things but it's really about time management and what you actually like decide to like focus on in the, sure. in the time being but i find and you know as all of us being artists are in, in somehow involved in in um obviously the music industry but like it's important to like just put as many fires out there because something's gonna burn right there you go 
I, so. I, I personally like variety too. So I working on it. I'm developing a TV show here, and I'm. But that's my point. Like I love that variety. But yes, you, I think be excellent at something. Like make sure that you're excelling exceptionally at something because you you're irreplaceable that way. Exactly. You're, you're bringing your best out somewhere. But yeah, most people have multiple talents. So no, a hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah. And then Mark, how did you uh, remind me how you guys met and. So I was in a band called 2AM Club when okay. I was younger, when I was uh, <laughs> first signed to RCA. This is in 2010, 2009, even when we first got signed. Moved to New York City, and at that time, I don't. I had lived here as like a teenager, okay. and I was playing like open mics, and this yeah, is like yeah. before the social media age by yeah. far. This is even yeah. before right. YouTube, so like we played... I played with Thundercat, Bruno Mars, like at, no op way. at, at open mics in LA. That's crazy. <clears throat> and like we had to start going to New York to get um do like showcases, which I don't think they do that anymore, but like they didn't have a no. way they didn't have a way <laughs> no. to tell the way that they decided if you were good was you they would fly you out. I'd never like even been on an airplane, it was ridiculous. Like my whole band, they would fly us out and then we would just perform for like L.A. Reid and yeah. Peter Edge and whoever wanted to yeah, sign yeah. us, and they would just sit there and yeah. be like, oh, you like oh you trust me. Yeah. And uh, God. so we got a deal, and then we found this manager, too, who had been um, the president of Atlantic Records at one point, so he's a very high-powered manager. And he um, was like, you have to learn how to sing if you're going to sing every night, and sent me to Wendy. To, oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. to, to start coaching me, and then... Our relationship developed a lot um, and turned into something more than just singing. And we've known each other since I was a child. At this point. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so in terms yeah. of we laugh. Yeah. going into that, like I know Wendy and I briefly talked about the holistic aspect of, of coaching, but I think, honestly, I think that's really interesting because obviously the whole premise of a show like this was because I struggled a lot with anxiety as a kid and like obviously coming into this industry, I think it serves great in a way because I think that, you know, the pain of, of a person obviously reflects in, in your art. But at the same time, it's like, how do you manage as a person, yeah. you know, going through it? So I'm interested to see your, like I know that you spoke about that in terms of like putting that into your practice and yeah. if that's something that. Well, I think art like, it's place to take your pain and turn it into something beautiful yeah which is a, such a healthy way to express and then connect others get to connect to it right relate to it so do you guys like when you're when you're doing like vocal like is it part of the process is what i'm saying like when you're sure. warming up or you're doing certain things that you do you bring in like the emotional aspects to it as well I, I think one thing that wendy really taught me um is well a few things but things, <laughs> a, a lot a lot of a lot of things but something that um, took me a really long time to grasp. Um, and I'm sure this is not what you normally go to when you're talking about the holistic approach, but it's, it's like the, the technique. I used to look at technique, vowels, how you breathe, how you sing. I used to look at the technique as like the antithesis of the feel. hundred percent. So I'd be like, I know I'm good and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to adhere to this, you know, this posture, this technique, because yeah. that takes away the soul. But it's actually yeah. the technique is what births the soul in your music. And it's the same thing, like, in meditation, like, posture is how you access, you know, where you want to go when you meditate. Like, posture. So when you That's sing the technique and, and, the, and the spirit, they're, like, one thing. And... Yeah. The technique should, should support yeah, the spiritual that's all, expression. All, that's this is all how it's I teach there it. to do. Yeah, that's and when you see 100%. the most technical singers who are like operatic singers, maybe yeah, they make you cry uncontrollably. Oh, Even I know. When you don't know what they're doing, and it's because the technique, the only the reason where I'm it like, comes from, <laughs> you know, but where it comes from is from trying to access your spirit and and your connection, but. Beyond that, also, we, we did a lot of work on, um, Wendy has this thing about archetypes, um, which I think that comes from, like, Greek gods, um, you know, who are, I mean, I like, love it. <laughs> um, we all have archetypes that we look up to. You know, I took it to be, like, find your actual favorite people, and what is it about these 
you know, these people, these artists that really resonated with you, <clears throat> what do they smell like? What do they look like? What do they sound like? And try to put that oh. into what you do. And for me, it was this still the hardest part of my career because I started off as a rapper. You know, I never wanted to be a singer. I didn't even know that was going to be part Thank of my goodness journey. You sang. I mean, you're so, yeah. that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. But people really don't know. Yeah, like, I, I, you know, in my on my phone, I have hundreds of songs and like trying to sift through them. We need to start doing this again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Uh, totally. Like having to sift through and find not what I can be, but what I want to be is always the uh, toughest thing for an artist. And yeah. I think that's what Wendy does really well is help artists Thank kind you. of figure out which way they want to go. And sometimes you can look at it like an art project and just be like, this is, I want to be this person now. You don't have to be stuck in it forever. Mm -hmm. But trying to dig deeper into it, um, into your vision for yourself. And like from working with Wendy, like you should see on my notes, like I have a blueprint of exactly how I'm going to make my album and what I want it to be and what's going to influence it and the steps to go. And now, and like, oh, I love that. it started I in la last July. Like, how long have I talk been talking? My album oh, is called, time. it's called Folk Hero Funk. The new folk, one. Folk Hero Funk, yeah. Is this breaking which, which, This is breaking, yeah. I've never <laughs> talked about it, but. Oh, wait, but say it one more time. Folk Hero Funk. Folk, folk Hero, Hero Funk. I know that, it's that a, came out of our conversation know, about architecture. Yeah, I know it's a mm -hmm. mouthful. Oh, a, so lot, good. a lot of people are like, well, but that's what it's going to be. And we we talked about that all the time. Like, what is a fo what is a folk hero? And so I like it started with my love of folk music. And there's like this lineage that we have as musicians in America that we're not really conscious of. But mm -hmm. it's the most integrated thing in our country is like people from all these parts of the world invented the blues, rock and roll hip hop, music, jazz, like that all came from people from all over the world being in one place. And folk music is like the first piece of that. And then it leads to funk music to me is like, that's what hip hop music is, that's everything. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and so everything we would do, it would be like, are you being a folk hero right now? Are you being a funky folk hero? Oh, that you know is good. Saying? Like, is this, are you reflecting, you know, and in, in, um, are you putting forth uh, the blueprint and and the uh, the influences that you want, and so it's things like that. Just really being conscious, like of the uh, it's it turns into branding, you know what I mean. But yeah. it's not really like you don't do it for the branding; you do it mm -hmm. for the art first, and then the branding follows suit easily. And all my favorite artists, <clears throat> Nipsey Hussle, it, like a, a lot of the greats, they just do it naturally. Tyler the Creator, like you yeah. see them and you're like, why are you so iconic? every time and you didn't even try it's because like that was their art was i don't know speaking i don't know if they didn't place. try i, I mean like maybe I, they did I try that, that's think, true i think that's the i think <clears throat> that's the thing that causes conflict for people like, right it seems easy for you you know i have, an, I have a true. new client who i have a new artist i'm working with developing and she's like i just thought i wasn't that talented because i thought beyonce was just born like that i'm like no beyonce has been working since she was a child oh no come on right harder but than ever that's yeah, right. yeah that's right Running circles around that so I think I think that that's part that's of like true. the conflict people get that they yeah. think oh I don't have it they have it it's easy for them Natural that that work talent. you're putting in is what is the work people put in and it's that that clarity is what makes the outcome resonate that clarity makes the outcome like we believe it because it's so honest and real and has depth to you you know mm -hmm. and I would I would say this translates to like a visual artist I remember seeing a visual artist work she's a friend of mine actually and it was white on white and it was geometric shapes and it was literally she created her own white paint it was white on white and it's super modern which is not usually my thing because it wow, doesn't that's, who is it uh, her that name is so cool oh uh now i'm going to want a name of someone i know very well and it's going to be hidden from me so oh my god I, I love my best, I best, best Damn, best <laughs> that's so funny it's <laughs> literally like yeah, it's an a and i can see her face and i can see the studio and i looked at the art but when I want the We're name, I put you on the side. Right. I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna get it. It's in my phone. I'm gonna get it. But I, I, names will literally just disappear. I feel I you. Them. I feel you. I don't even remember the lyrics to the songs that I write. There you so go. it's so trust me. I, I wanted to say two <laughs> points to what you said because well, there's so many points because you said so many golden things. But I, I looked at this art, which normally would not move me, but it was so moving. It was right. emotionally moving, which to me is the purpose of making art, any kind of art. And I was like, I see like 
the cosmos here. I see like humans, humanity like connecting. And then she told me her premise behind making this white on white geometric, sh and that's what it was. Like I got her intention. It's about intention, yeah, and I get that. And it is about intention. Yeah. I felt her intention in the execution, and that's because she's a very good artist. So she could take her intention, translate it into the art, right? And the singer yeah. needs to take that intention, and it's got to come out in the voice, in the lyric, in the arrangement, in the visuals. Like, there's so many ways it needs to come out. Well, you guys said two really interesting things. I think, obviously, like, the meditation aspect of it, like, when you even were saying, like, posture, like, to me, like, if you're in a place spiritually where it's like um, the ideas can flow, mm -hmm. plus meeting that with technique, because they're kind of like, it's so, exactly, it's, so, it's like, it feels very different, but I think that that's when it be seems easy, if that makes sense. Because yeah. if you have the, it's like the training wheels, right? It's like riding a bike where it's like, oh, at first, the first time we probably all rode a bike, it was probably pretty hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. But now you're like, oh, it's easy. So if you, ha that's the technical aspect, I guess. But then the spiritual part, in my opinion, or my personal journey has been harder, not to say I'm a very spiritual connected person, but I think it's hard to control all those emotions and, mm make them feel like they don't contribute to things like anxiety or you know just things that can feel negative that don't have to be does that make so, sense mm -hmm. yeah so the first session i have with everyone and for me like the most important thing is your heart and spirit being there like if you have three yes. raspy notes to your name and you are making me feel something you're amazing exactly but add the skills to that three raspy notes to your name yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's right right because like, but if you're making me cry, you're making me feel something, that's awesome. Yeah. But the more skills you have, the more accurately you can execute what you want to execute. Like, it's hard to express, you know, I'm really, I'm really pissed off. I'm so mad right now. I'm, I have this passion and fury. But if I'm talking, are you feeling me? If no. You're, right. So if, if you're. Oh, I was wondering where we were going. I was like, oh, that's, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually so true. Right. Like, if your voice is not connected to your guts, I'm not going to feel your anger, your passion. Oh. So the voice has to Love be able that. to express the emotions you want, right? And a lot of the anxieties that people have and the fears that people have and the perfectionism that artists have are all those ideas that block your spirit from coming through because they're they're getting in your way. Right, exactly. Like all these ideas of like, I'm not good enough and all the things you think you have to get right, they block your creative flow. They block you from being your personal genius. Well, don't you think technique, okay, this is, this is what I meant to say. Like technique gives you confidence and confidence gives you the ability to be free, right? Don't you yes, think in a way? Yes, but only if technique is taught in a way that helps you be in your That's body. That's what I'm saying, exactly. And, in, and it's being service to your art, not like, oh, I have to get this technique right now. That's not what I mean. I mean yeah. something to the point where you feel like it's so second nature that you don't it's have to. Kind of, it's kind of like when you're rehearsing for a show, the, you would think um, something that was choreographed to the T would be less emotional to the crowd. Right. But it's actually knowing exactly what you're going to do, every step, where your hand is going to be, what your yeah. wardrobe right. is going to be. <clears throat> it actually frees you up. The preparation. Because, because you're not even thinking about that. All you're thinking about is living within the moment of what you're doing. Yeah. And then it takes you to from, you know, like when Michael Jackson is doing anything on stage and there's like people are passing out <laughs> and yeah, like yeah, freaking yeah. out. It's like, you better believe. Same thing with Beyonce. He practiced every single thing over and over and over again. There was nothing that happened that he didn't know was going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when he was delivering it, he's in the moment and he's, you know, being... If he feels like shit that day, if he's at, whatever, wherever he's at gets transmitted because that's the only thing he has to worry about at that point. So it's like that. That becomes the variable. <clears throat> yeah. exactly. Your honesty in the moment becomes the variable. The exactly. rest is consistently, count. you can count on it. Um, do you, I, if you don't feel comfortable talking about it, but is there, have you gone through any like versions of depression, anxiety, like all that stuff in your life? Um, or not. I made a whole album called Postmodern Depression. It was uh, two albums ago. And uh, oh, yes. yeah. uh, so, well, so. <laughs> well, I, uh, I mean, to be fair, like I've never been um, medicated or I have people in my well, family who are like truly, you know, have like serious okay. mental health issues. So I wouldn't say I have that. But I think what I've had is like a, just like a constant dull what am I doing here? <laughs> Got it. Uh, like here on the planet or here in yeah, music? Yeah, but also a lot of times, like, 
it happened in music a lot. And I think I had this whole manifesto for, this was two albums ago now, but looking back, it was almost like ahead of its time. Just yeah. about <clears throat> when people are um, receiving so much information at one time, um, it's hard to latch on to anything to know what's true. You can see it in politics and society now. Like it's really hard to figure out, you know, even or even if you just put it in terms of music, there's like two hundred thousand songs uploaded every day. So if you wanted to be a music listener and you were into music, it would be depressing just on the face of it because it's so too much. Yeah, there's nothing you can really. That's a really good point. Really nothing you can really latch on to and find out. And I think people are so inundated with so much information that the only way you can turn is like almost off a little bit and become desensitized, which makes you depressed, which is, you know, almost a lot of times I, I equate depression to just feeling like nothing. Like I don't even oh, yeah, know yeah. No. how to feel. Um, so or that's... Or unwilling to feel, right? Kind of, like yeah. Like I had to take my whole, change my whole drip to be like i listen to music on vinyl in my house like i a read vibe. i just try to make myself connected again to the earth and things that are like a vinyl rec record is wax you know it's like this mm. this singer's voice is like indented in this oh. piece of material and it's it's intended <laughs> to be played front to back exactly like, yeah so like i want to sit here i'm gonna smoke this right. joint and like really vibe out and listen to this because when I go on TikTok and I see that new AI artist who Isn't does the crazy? Drake with the ghost thing, like crazy. that's taking over the world. So you have mm -hmm. to, you have to, you don't have to shun the future because I'm into that too, but you have to stay rooted. And every, the way that they, the way that like technology is going, it really is like, it's trying to just mine all of your attention. And that's yeah. like the only thing we're good for, you know. And taking the point. humanity. From Absolutely, yeah. Like yeah. we're becoming inhumane just by definition. Oof. Just looking at the phone all day, all oh. day, yeah. listening to the music that they create. It's like it's a freaky time. It's expectations. Yeah. It's expectations the, of humans today. Is mm -hmm. is uh, it's it's hard to live up to, really. The data right now shows that like the level of loneliness is skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could the scrolling and thinking you're connected oh. is not connection. I mean, it's just like the level of of you know, obviously, like comparisons and things mm -hmm. like that too is hard because you, it's like no matter what, like that will never like you you will never be able to achieve what you want to achieve in your head by comparing. You know what I'm no. saying? Because it's like everybody, regardless of how many people there are, there's always going to be a place for uniqueness. Yeah, and it's hard it's to for like you, which is why I find like meditation very interesting i mean i've tried and it's sometimes successful and sometimes not not very consistent but i do think that people that are like practice it and are very like diligent about doing it it's are, life changing it's life changing yeah wendy gave me this <laughs> she gave me a meditation oh, uh i forgot about that the pre-show um, meditation no the uh morning and the night meditation um what's his Oh, oh, we need it. Is this, um, is this something that we so, should be? Oh, 100%. So I've been doing this for like five years now. It's oh, like wow. the best I have, thing I do. I have meditations for artists. One that's like you do before you perform, go on stage. Oh, I, do okay. that one. I do that one too, but I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about when you um, first put me on. That was yeah. before you. Okay, like, again, let me, get the, let me get the guy's name. His name is Joe Dispenza. <laughs> oh, Joe Dispenza. Okay, wow. Yeah. Joe Dispenza is very well known. He's amazing. Yeah. He's like, so he has a morning and evening meditation. Okay. And a new one, which I may not have shared. I don't know if I shared it with you. A new one that I was turned on to is uh, Zinn. Uh, I think it's Z-I-N-N Cabot. And he has, a, it's called a full body scan. And it's meant to, it's intended to be done awake. And it's a super deep rest. It puts me out immediately. I was going to say, and I sleep body scan so at night. well. Really? It puts me to sleep, yeah. I am so out. I'm on calm. And most of, oh, the, yeah, night, calm. Most of the night meditations are body scans. Yeah, and I'm like, I get halfway up, and I'm like, out, out, out. I'm out during the introduction. I, am <laughs> out. I think this just Amazing. something that just occurred to me that I'd like to share. Yes, please. <laughs> is, um, I think the reason why like artists and musicians are so into like spiritual practice now is because that used to be what art was, yeah. and it's like writing songs is supposed to be that energy exchange that makes people feel spiritual. Mm -hmm. connected like the way you feel when you're in church and people are singing like that's 
what birthed music performance, period. Yeah. So 100%. <clears throat> because it's been so commodified and like everything, especially when you live in LA, good God, like you cannot write a song without thinking about is this gonna be a hit? Who's it gonna be a oh. hit for? That's just what we do. That's our training. Yeah. And like if it's if it's not in that category, then you're like, whoa, I could just do this like in my house by myself exactly. or something. So but, be, you're supposed I, to. but I think <laughs> that's true too, but I think because music has kind of been, and just creativity in general is like, I hate to be so dark, but in a way it's like hijacked. Like the most, yeah, mm -hmm. there is no more counterculture really. There's no like young artists bucking the trend. Like there, there's, in the 60s and 70s, no artists would even be in a commercial, period. You would never see any of your heroes be like in a McDonald's commercial, ever. They I didn't, know. They literally would have lost their fans. That wasn't part of the culture. If, if, if that would have, you would have been perceived as a sellout and you would never sell tickets again. So now that that's completely okay, it's like we have to be into Joe Dispenza and like manifestation yeah, and yeah. meditation because yeah. that's another way to exchange ideas and energy that's not um, so commercial. And it's just, it's, it's the failure of capitalism. Exactly. Like I was gonna say, I was thinking like culture versus commerce this? when you were talking yeah. about that and how it was very much the opposite now. Now it's all about fitting culture into commerce, and you guys are like, no. So we have to find our culture elsewhere now, and, and this Joe Dispenza is another man. And again, reminding yeah. artists, like I, I remind artists all the time, like, and, and I gotta remind myself too, like, everything you do is not for consumption. You know, as a creative, you need to do <laughs> ten drafts of something. <laughs> You need to write 10 versions of the same song and one of those will be like, that's the song. <laughs> but you needed 10 versions of it to tell, find the best way to tell that story. So if you want to make content, share your process, but some of it should just be for you. You know, some of it is not, it's not all for consumption. It's not good enough, but it's also just not the creative process. Well, and maybe, yeah, like I think that the whole point of like th there's a, like. It's like releasing endorphins or whatever, that feeling yes. of like writing something, we forget to your point where it's like, you go in and that those moments like are like, they literally, literally can't top them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like in terms of like that high when you write something that like feels like, like to your core amazing. And it shouldn't really matter because even if, like, you know, in our, in our culture of like hit all the stuff you were saying, it's like, maybe it is even a hit, but like, why do, why is it up to whoever, whatever label head to tell you that? Is what I'm saying. It can still be a hit, like, but not in the way that it's presented in in our culture. You know, if if you're a songwriter and you've been writing hits, and you know when you crack the code, exactly. That's and the like point. it's the best feeling, oh. and you're like, oh, I did it today. <laughs> and then and then, but that's never enough because then you send it to your publisher, and they're like, huh, like Which the payoff. Oh. <laughs> and then and so it's like fighting against that, and I could see how that could be anxiety inducing also because you're giving of yourself and you know you did it like oh i just did it like now when i go into meetings i have a new tip if you're a good okay. if you're a good songwriter if you truly are good like you are like i am like you are, <laughs> when you go into your meetings <clears throat> tell them to play their music first every every time i go now oh, i love that no matter who it is wow. i'm like and they're like, I'm there to play, you know, to sell them on my songs. But I'm like, I'm going to make sure you play me a song or two or three. And then when my songs are better than all your songs you played, then we can start our discussion. Because I, oh, <laughs> I hate playing music for people. And then I leave feeling a little slightly dejected. And then I hear the album that they put out. I'm like, this is ridiculous. If you would have just played your shit first, this whole conversation would have been different. Because... Who's supposed to have the power? Like the creative is exactly. supposed to have the power in this situation. And if you play me a song that's better than all my songs on my phone, then you omit it. Like fine. Immediately, good for you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. do not need me to be here. <clears throat> but when it becomes all political and a thing, and that when the person's checking their phone while they're listening oh. to your music and all that, it's like just tell them let's listen to like let me see where you guys are at, so I know. Yes. what I'm doing a hundred percent and also like that's so that is so true because at the end of the day like you write a song you know in your gut it's good it's like all those things and you go and show it to somebody and they're like eh, it's fine like why it shouldn't even affect you you should just be like okay you're wrong 
But the, it, the it affects you way less yeah. if you ask them to play what their best song is. No, I'm are. saying I, for whatever I, the artist, it's the best feeling. I mean, <laughs> it's a little hard. You're just like, well, because you I wouldn't mean, be there if no. they had it. So it's like and it's win-win because like if it's amazing and better than your songs, then you're like shit. Oh, nobody's wasting your that. time. That's true. Or too, challenges yeah. you. And then mm. on the flip side, if it's not, then you're like, yo, let's well, work. And even, and they, and yeah, because they can recognize it too. Like, oh. Yeah, that your stuff is really strong. Like they right. see it, be like then they start valuing you. I heard I heard something said. And I really love this. I'm not gonna remember the whole quote, but it it basically was like when when criticism come, is coming to you, including like social media trolls and such and such. The only criticism that you ought to take in is from other people who are in the arena with you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If the they are, t- uh, yes. Yes. Is it, is it Roosevelt? Roosevelt? It's Roosevelt. Yeah. And it's like if mm-hmm. if you're a spectator. What do you have to say? Mm-hmm. Like, what, you know, someone commenting, are you, have you written a song? Have you written thousand songs? Like, I, I'll, I will talk to the people who are in the arena with me, sweating it out, fighting it out, blood, sweat, and tears. Yes and no, but like, okay, no, I completely agree with that, but at the same time, like, I hate to say it, but people in this business too like to hate to make themselves feel better for whatever reason you know what i'm saying where it's like they may be in your arena but but because there's a competition and nobody for whatever reason like songwriter against songwriter that's what i'm saying like Like, i had enough rooms for the hits that you gotta like compete and i would i would love to remove that competition yeah yeah. even though they know very well it they probably are saying it sucks because they think it's lit you know what i'm saying it's like because at the end of the day, it's 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 again back to what you're saying. You know it's good. So even yeah. if you were to be in there, they play their song, you play yours. They'd probably be like, you know those people. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, okay. Well, the, you can't you can't ignore right? the truth. You know everyone. You know yeah. the capital T truth inside. You can of you. pretend. Yeah, you can pretend, and everyone can everyone can pretend with you if you want, right? But like when and that's why I was like, I'll go back to like trusting your truth is right. key and essential. Like. And surrounding yourself, like, don't go in that room with that person again. Like, you know, you're like, oh, they're, you know. <laughs> right. I su- I'm a masochist, so. No. I always just go straight, wherever they're going to shit on me the most. I know. Like, yeah. See, that's okay. See, that's your <laughs> so issue. Where is that? Uh, that's the that studio and an A&R office. Because like I, I do, th- I do think that, like, surrounding yourself like with everywhere. people that, like, <laughs> no, no, are no. truly genuine and do want to champion you is essential. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's essential. But wait, Mark, back to, I want to know more about that. And I also think that, like, that kind of stuff, like, helps drive you, you know, being in the place where they're, like, it's not good enough or whatever. You're, like, I'm going to make better then. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, like, I don't know. being Well, it's weird. I I have this issue of being, like, you know, sometimes I'm literally think to myself, like, Mark, damn, you must be the best songwriter in the world. Like, there is no one better than you. And then sometimes... I'm in the room and I hear like some little song that no one else even likes and I'm like, oh my God, that's so much better than anything I've ever done. <laughs> Why is no one? So I like to, I'm like the opposite in a sense. Like I usually, which I try to get better at, but I don't necessarily go to places that reinforce my ego. I usually go, I'm usually attracted to places where it's more of a competition and a challenge. Right. And even within a room, like sometimes, I sent I sent a song to Kate the other day. Yeah, yeah. And the first half of the song wasn't me writing it or on the record. It was like this young songwriter I worked with in Atlanta, and she was like, "Why did you do that?" Like, to, and I was like, "Listen, like this kid was so good, and no one's ever heard of him." Yeah. <clears throat> but she just immediately like tuned it out because mm-hmm. whatever. And then I was like, "Listen again." And then she came to my house. And we listened to it 10 times and it was so good. And I, I took it like whatever he was doing, I wanted to get engaged with that and like challenge that and be better than, not be better oh, than. Oh, that's interesting. But like I, I'm always looking for the place where I'm going to challenge myself and then learn something. And because Beautiful. a lot of times, um, if you've been writing songs long enough and you have a talent for it, you could probably figure out the way that things used to be done. Like, you could figure out, okay, we need this little intro part, and then we're going to dip into the verse, and we're going to switch the cadence here, and then we're going to hit this note in this chord when the lift comes and the hook. And, like, you can really deconstruct all of that. But that's only because of Stevie Wonder and all the, you know, all the songwriters that came before you. So you're really just rehashing something that's been 
you know, um, been done over and over again. So to find like the next thing it has to come from someone that doesn't know about that. Right. <clears throat> because so you have to be open to hearing someone that's, you know, brand new and fresh because they don't have the experience to know. I know if we sit down on a piano, we can write something that sounds like a hit every time because it's a, a formula. Yeah. It's a formula to it. And when you do hit it right and it feels soulful and not corny, oh, it's the best feeling in the world. Literally. Because it's like a puzzle. But then you but to hit that like next, next level, that's where the inexperience comes in. Where it's like, I don't know what I did. I just like well, that's oh, you might just hit it on the head right now. The inexperience. I love yeah. it being yeah, said like, like that. Yeah, like it's like when Bob Dylan came out. There's something beautiful about that. Yeah. yeah but, like, but as a seasoned artist, that's where we're talking about that inner child. Like, how can I get my inner child to play? And not just follow the things that I know already. Exactly. But can I play again? And can I play again? And can I be inspired again? And can I be inspired again by something new? Can I take... Can I take... Uh, I love that. Because you're talking about excellence. I, I would mm -hmm. never want anyone to like pump your ego up. Like that's a waste of that's detrimental. Actually, it's not even mm -hmm. a waste of time. It's detrimental. Well, that, those, yeah. but, those but terms, yeah. striving for excellence to like outdo yourself. Can I? Can I? Can I go beyond what I've done? Because that's where that joy you talked about is. That's where that surprise is. That's where like I wrote those lyrics. I don't even remember those lyrics coming out of me. I said that. That's a beautiful lyric. And that's I, the like, spiritual aspect yeah, in a way too. Yeah. Because that that play is there, and that joy and that fun is there. And I think that like, like, for me, it's it's funny because sometimes like the first writing sessions you have, the ones that you're more like nervous about, end up being amazing because it's like the mm -hmm. adrenaline rush of it, or the situations where you do find your people. But I think that in betweens, like, like, it can be like for me at least, like I feel like it can get like stagnant where you stop like getting that like feeling of challenge being challenged mm -hmm. with people that you work with a lot. And then you find like, oh, there's nothing new. So there is something to be said about like a little healthy anxiety to, to it, right? Mm -hmm. In a good way. Yeah. yeah. Like to be fearful, like to be like, damn, like can I step up and yeah. do something that I I've think it shows you care too. Like, right. You, like you're like, I, I don't, I want to go beyond. Like, I you know, that's, you, you care. Well, and people, that's like a proven thing too. Like I've, us, as humans, we want to be challenged. We want to learn yeah. something. I think it's great. Yeah, but I find that like most of our business sits back to what's comfortable for them instead of pushing themselves to beat themselves, be better than themselves. You know, they go for the comfort and the familiarity and the formula. Mm. And maybe that's I mean, just like, you know, with the longer you do it, it's just easier that way. Well, but the I love if you, if the you know, experience of, you know, those people. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know any different, so I'm just going to do what I feel like, what's authentic and what I think it's going to be instead of the way it's done. I think artists, there's a certain part of the artist that is like, I, we are compelled, right? I'm comp I have to do this thing. I'm compelled to do this thing. I don't, I don't even have control of it. Like, if I didn't sing, I'd, like, what could I do? So I think in all creation, like, that part of, like, that compulsion or that, that motivation is there that's like, I have to. And so there is that, you know, I, I just learned recently, and, you know, for me, like, I have a startup business. So I've spent two years, like, feeling like I'm hitting my head against the, the wall, like, learning five new softwares. And... It's very uncomfortable until you get a little over a learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. And I have two 18-month-old kids who, like, oh, my gosh. They, like, he wants to pick big things up, and he wants to push. And he wants to, <laughs> and he, he, you know, I'm watching him figure stuff out, just watching me do things. And then he's going, how does that work, you know? So watching how we learn in human. And I just learned, actually, in order to learn, in order to grow, we actually have to be in discomfort. That's like oh, our, yeah, this, our yeah. brain. See, we were on to yeah. something. Yeah, here, our brain, <laughs> like in order to literally learn and grow, it has to be uncomfortable or we don't learn it. It's like yeah. lifting weights. You're ripping the muscle so it right. grows bigger. Right. So like just knowing that I think can remove some of the anxiety of like, oh, nothing's wrong here. Like I'm not dumb or I'm like, it's not wrong. Like this is just the process of expansion. And even if you do think that for a second, maybe it's okay. You know right. what I'm saying? Depending on what you, you do with that feeling. That's right. And that's the whole thing, right? right. And I think that and that's not, not the give up or not the I suck. Just like, oh, right, this is process. Let's let's keep going. Let's go through it. <clears throat> and just to put a positive spin on that too. We I like mean, not that it wasn't spin. positive, but that's why too. I really look back. I cherish all the times when I was just when nothing was working. Like when you're in sessions and you're just like getting shitted on by everyone. Yeah, and like, yeah. I had a lot like early on. I've worked a lot with like really famous R&B singers 
and they were so mean to me. Oh. And just like really feeling like I sucked. But it really made me have to, like, what can I do in this room that everyone's gonna be excited about? And I would have to go to a place like, I can't out sing anybody in here, <clears throat> I can't out play anybody. They got typical lyrics better than I do. So my first thing was like, what can I, maybe if I come up with a bar that is like really cuts through. So it was just like, think of lyrics, Mark. Like, you gotta have that in you better yeah, than everyone yeah, yeah. here. And then it grew to like, so every time now looking back, like I got so much better in those, in that era where people were just like yelling at me, like, no, nah, that's suck out, get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of the booth. You're negatively and motivated. Maybe so, yeah. But 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 no. But looking back, like I've had sessions with people who are legitimately, as musicians, technically more talented than me at everything about music. Like I've worked with musical geniuses, and so it's made me have to be like, what can I do that would contribute to this that. person's art? And that's when like the only thing that you can contribute in that situation is something that's uniquely yourself. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to that thing of like having to find having to be vulnerable and having to like, that's the form, like having to really express something. Cause even if you have, what's it? Three, uh, three, three raspy notes to your name. <laughs> oh, you can, we, we always have a nice little phrase from each episode. Yeah, even that. if you have three raspy <laughs> notes to your name, you can still make a hit, but it's going to have to be like something that's really authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes those like dark places where people aren't, you know, where people, where maybe it's negative and people are down on you. It's actually, it's not pushing you to be them. It's pushing you to be yourself better. So like now when I look back, oh, I'm like, like, oh, that kind of actually gave me confidence in myself because okay. the way I got out of those situations was by being authentic because of, like trying to be like them, it wasn't going to work. Yeah. Did you, uh, <clears throat> just a quick question. Um, did you, how was that like transitioning from being in a band to going solo? Well, loaded question. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, my band was, I was so young, I didn't even know, and we didn't have a way to learn about the industry at that time. So, like, in my band, there was six of us, and we wrote all the songs all together. So, I didn't even know that I was songwriting. I thought that oh. me making the lyrics and the melody and bringing them to the band and then them, and then them constructing the music around it. I thought like you needed all of that to create a song. I didn't even know that people wrote songs for other people until I was like 24. And really? So, yeah, I really didn't That's know crazy. that. Like I never did any sessions. Like my band was extremely talented. Look, the drummer of my band is Lady Antebellum's drummer now. Oh wow! Country, big country band. <clears throat> my keyboard player is Macklemore's keyboard player, and we were like 18, so we were really oh, good. Oh, it's so fire! We could play jazz. Like we were just our guitar player. He's, he was better than all of us. He doesn't do music, or he does music, but anyways, yeah, yeah. not, not, no, not. <laughs> He's actually so, a busking rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he married a rich girl. He's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so going from, I was so excited to break out of my band once I realized. Yeah. So I like forced myself out of it, became more successful in my band really quickly, and like did seemingly like everything I wanted to do, but then I realized like, everyone around me was the same people as my band. Like, even though they weren't on stage with me anymore, like, this, these two guys was the same as the guy I used to share the stage with. And so I actually, I didn't really get out of a band until... Like, created the same atmosphere. I created the exact same atmosphere. And all the things I hated about being in the band were still with me. Even right. though I was on stage and getting all the attention, I didn't even recognize it. Really? I had two... Two songs in the top 50 on Hot 100, and right away, like, and I didn't even know. I was just still felt the same way, so I had to really, it was like a lot of personal work and trying to figure out myself to, like, change. Even though I was out of a band, I was just jumped into another band. I literally moved in with six, I was in a band with six men, and I moved from that world into f five. I just adopted five new. Guys <laughs> that were around me all the time. Yeah. And and then, like, I even, I was so used to having to get all, my whole band's um, approval for a song to go through that 
that's still one of my weaknesses being like, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What, oh, me too. I'm looking for everyone to tell me yeah. that's good instead of being like, someone took, and then I complain about those like other collaborators not finishing. And my friend the other day was like, they don't finish because you don't finish. Ooh. And I was like, whoa, it's really true. Like it's, that's I, I tinker with the best of them. If anyone wants to battle me, and, and if anyone's ever made Can a- Can I battle you? No, I'm just kidding. No, no but I'm saying- We like, already have a number one song together. You we didn't mention that. <laughs> Once you get the V50 of a mix or something, it's just like, I still suffer from that. I mean, what do you do on V50? That's a good question. Go back to V1. Yeah, yeah, usually. literally. So annoying. Sometimes, I mean, unless it's like, yeah. like, like, yeah. I mean, I guess it's all different, but are you talking about mixes or productions? Both. I mean, mixes are tricky because sometimes, like, your gut, if it's not right the first time, will tell you, and then you try to get it right, and it never quite gets there, but when you get the right mix, like, sometimes you just have to trust that, like, yeah. initial gut. That's, I've been learning that, too. Like, if it sounds good early, that's it. That's, that's the song. Because it's like, yeah. you know how, like, a lot of times you're like, I need to find a comment. You're like, oh, yeah, like, that snare or whatever, and, but it's like, why? You know, that's back to like where technical becomes bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you have to, field, when you have to right? pick, like when you're going through like picking songs and you're like, well, this one's going to be really good. Yeah. It's like, mm. whichever one's just are good early on. And they have to feel good. Yeah, it's, it's about saying, feel. Yeah, it's well, whichever one's sound good and feel good early on, even if you thought, oh, the hook wasn't as big as this one. Right. But this this one doesn't, no one wants to listen to this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. It's like, that's your answer right there. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> You'll be surprised. Like the song you didn't like, you thought was like you know lower in your ranking. Yeah, when yeah. You go to produce and you're like, this thing's hot. Like the sleeper comes up. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Have to yeah. Let it. yeah. That's I why mean, it's good to play stuff for other people and get opinions because like what you may not like, other people are gonna be like, oh my god, that's, that's so incredible. True. Yeah, that's true. Wait, that's wait. why it's like the the whole thing where people are always like artists number one or like that song student. ends up you being like your least yeah. liked yeah. song or whatever yeah. Yeah. which is kind of true you got to get you got to well, give again, it again the thing that's going to get the broadest reach is not going to be the artist necessarily the artist like favorite song favorite song or, or song it is could be or something but yeah. just only because it's like broad reach right so it might get a little but you wrote it like it's there you wrote it you put it in the pack so you do love it or sometimes i think it's one of those ones that maybe you're so self-conscious about because it feels so personal exactly. and it's like something that you're worried to share with people but when you do it's like such a like so that the fear makes you not want to put it so i always ask not like a, it. i always ask an artist this question like and this happens every time like before a record comes out big fear like you're about to give birth to so like these things that you manage yeah, there are babies. right your babies before a music video comes out and and the test to me of like is it resistance and fear or is it like actually not in alignment just ask yourself this question is going back to like archetypes like if does it fall under the umbrella of who you are and what you put out in the world like let's say you're a badass edgy dark blah, it, is it fall under that maybe the production's not as great as you wish it was you wanted a bigger budget you wish but does it fall under that umbrella then then your stoppage is coming from fear sabotage and resistance See, it, I like that. Right? I'm going to start using that. And if it doesn't if you're like no like there's nothing badass about it there's nothing edgy about it okay then then the, the thing itself, the creation, didn't hit the mark for your expression. You gotta go back and redo it. But I really like what he said. He's like, you, you, you um, that what they, what do you say? That what they smell like, mm -hmm. what they sound yeah. I'm like, oh damn, some of the people I look up to, I don't know what they smell like. So I gotta go <laughs> find them yeah. somewhere so I can find their smell. It's <laughs> part of the Wendy um, training method. Yes. But uh, no, thank you guys for today. I, I know we're running out of time and it's uh, we could talk forever, but this has been amazing. And like, I just love hearing people's stories and just understanding like, you know, where, where one, your music has come from and also just like to inspire people and be able to like use maybe like the negative things to become positive or even just to like, again, we all learn something, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're, thank you. We're all, yeah, totally, we're all, our differences are what makes us beautiful, but we're all more similar than we are different. Oh, we love it. There See, you just have to put them all in. By the way, before we stop, too, yeah. um, I noticed that you have these three. Don't you have it right here? I have three dots here. Oh, I thought they were stars because you were also wearing the star. I've got, I got stars here. Because it's like there. You said something about like the Cosmo mm -hmm. aspect of it, and I'm all about that. So I'm just saying we're aligned today. There we go. I love that. <laughs> we got all right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dash.